everybody, how is it going? Yesterday I published a rapid game and it seemed to be very popular, so let's hop in and do it again. This is a 10 minute game against Zigzag Zug Zwang, and hopefully we can get something fun and interesting. So maybe we'll get another London, or maybe we'll get to try it for a wagon gambit <laughs> and see if the opponent is ready for this move A6, which I intend on playing B5, offering sort of a wing gambit and we'll see how the opponent responds to it. Bro, I love your videos. Thank you. But I hate this gambit. <laughs> I'm gonna say, <laughs> All right, we're playing against a fan. He hates this gambit. Hopefully, what the heck, dude? <laughs> okay, wow. Is this the way? to compete with the wagon gambit. A6, he plays G4. Let's, all right, look. I'm not gonna decline a fellow gambiteer's gambit, okay? If he, if this is how hard he wants, could I, should I gambit right back? Should I play D5 or is that too far? Let's try to be professional, okay? I will play D6 to defend my knight. And then maybe I have some opportunities to, I don't know play e5 on the next move or something or st i don't know all right i'm just i'm already intrigued guy played g4 i would n assume that he has not done any prep on this i'm assuming this is we're making it up on the fly i will retreat my knight i did get attacked this does look like a very interesting system for white against the wagon because you can play g4 in other lines how does it usually go? Because you can you can play g4 early in so many different lines here. So I've hopped my knight back, and I just want to take this e pawn. Huh. So I imagine knight to c3 would be solid, but I guess, you know, you also look at, like, punishing moves. <laughs> can I play e5 and roll this guy? But if you play e5, I'm going to be able to take. And if takes, we're swapping queens, and that can't possibly be correct. Um, so I guess b5 doesn't make that much sense, but if takes, I could play bishop here. It doesn't make that much sense, but it is kind of the gambity way to do it. <laughs> I don't really want to go into a Benoni structure. All right, I'm going to develop my pieces in a surprising move. And I'm just going to play for e5. And I'll let my opponent be the one that gambits. It is kind of cool that, like, I hop into the pool a lot. I run into, like, a lot of fans. A lot of people say, hey, I love your videos and whatever. And I think it's really cool. I appreciate it when you guys <laughs> let me know when we're playing. But I have to give you a, a strong warning. If you do let me know you're a fan, I have to. You, you need to be warned. I try a lot harder, okay? This is now a very serious gambit encounter that we are dealing with here. I'll play e5. And if d5, we'll play some sort of like King's Indian thing where I'll move my knight back. I could actually go back here if I think I'm going to make use of this square. But I, uh, the g file's open. Do I want to play a King's Gambit... Actually, it might be very dangerous, honestly. If I ever play g6 and they're ever going to play h4. So I might, I might actually want to think about this. I'm not sure that I actually want to go for some structure like this, trying to castle. My, my mouse, my mouse. Because then some sort of h4. Maybe I will go back to b8. But maybe the opponent now feels like they're steamrolling me. <laughs> I'm getting repelled for just the cost of one pawn. He was able to easily repel my knights. And it's not so easy to get this guy out. If he ever plays knight f3, this piece is so bad, this light squared bishop, that I might just try to like pin this guy and, and remove it. And he's like for sure going on the queen side. Maybe I, oh, but now he's also gonna have these ideas. This could be very dangerous. Probably at some point I do need to play b5. B5 will make more sense once he castles queenside. C6 is also possible. C5 is possible. You know, it's a legal way to play chess. Um, 
Okay, I'm going to develop this guy to e7. So I'm preparing to castle. And let's see if he castles. If he castles... I'll be tempted to play b5. I'll be tempted to try to work against the center at some point. But I don't know where I put my king. The open g-file is a little bit scary. Um, let's put this knight here. Yeah. So I'm not going to castle into this because I'm too scared. <laughs> but I could at some point try to go here. But if I play here attacking this pawn, he's probably going to play f3. But this would give me time to develop this so that in the event of b4, I could go here if I think that's good. And I think that is. So I am going to play this move. I'm attacking this pawn. And I'm delaying castling. Oh, wow, he takes. Wow, that's very interesting. Huh. I'm actually kind of surprised by that decision. I wonder if this is a horrible move or not. So I think a sensible way is to go here. I would like my knight, though, to be on d6 at some point. I wonder if this is a decent move. Because if you take here, I take back with my knight. Which seems like a good square for a knight in general. And then I could put my bishop somewhere. Um... If you take, I get to take and I'm on your rook immediately. Which, I don't know, maybe he's psycho. Maybe he's going to sack an exchange, but that would be kind of fun. I think I am going to play this move. And defend my pawn this way. And then this guy... I'm not sure. I'm dreaming... Okay. So let's go for this. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I like my pieces being on this diagonal. I feel like a common mistake <laughs> could occur where I'm somehow able to one day go here, but that's not a tactic in this situation. I'm going to put you here. And I need to be alert for tactics as well. Because something might try to happen against my F-pawn. Actually, taking was very interesting, because he might fall for the little trick. Ah, maybe I should have taken this H-pawn. Ah, why didn't I greed a little harder? Ah, I should have taken the H-pawn. Because then there's a chance that he would... Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. What? He's going to fall for it. He's falling right into my trap. Which way is he going to take back? I have my bishop coming here. So if he takes my pawn back... Either way, he's going he's gonna to run into issues on this diagonal. He realizes. So I'm going to go here now. If knight here, I probably just take it. And otherwise, I think I'm going to be playing for queen f6, and I'm just full on... I took this pawn, and it's mine now. You gave it to me. Similar idea would be to go here. Also attacking this pawn. Hmm. Okay, that's a good move. But maybe I just defend my bishop. This pawn is defended. So I can move my bishop, but it might be... I'm trying to think of where I want my queen. I actually kind of want my queen here. So maybe I move the bishop. But I like the bishop there, because it's going to take a knight. Okay, let's start with this. Let's just defend our piece. And I'm two pawns up. I'm ready to castle. And I feel like I have a good grasp on this position. But I didn't see that move. So maybe I'm scared. <laughs> but don't tell my opponent. Because uh, I'm going to have to play like f5. Which might be fine. Okay, I'm going to play f5. And if takes, takes. Uh, probably the king moves. And at some point, if a knight ever comes here, I think, worst case, I can always take it. I always try to be, like, spicy and never take this guy, but I love my dark-squared bishop. He's so strong. He's so mighty. I could even consider taking with a queen and then really greeting out. 
And just going for this. But if nothing else, I just want a castle. Castling would also save me a lot of headaches. Okay, so he just gets out the way. So I think I just castle queenside. And my position is very safe, very tidy. So let's do that. Huh. So he did gambit a lot, but I don't think he has enough compensation <laughs> for all of the material. G5 is also an interesting move at some moment here. Unless I think I can sneak my queen over. I can attack this rook and then eventually put my queen on the diagonal that I think she belongs on. But g5 is also interesting, because takes I take back, and a rook trade would be great, because you would get rid of your kind of annoying piece and activate my other rook to an open file. Just taking a look at the clock. This is the this is the moment in the game where you're like, wait, what's what's going on with the clock? <laughs> and you gotta take a quick peek. Aha. Uh -huh. So it's a pretty good move. Pretty good move. A lot of pretty good moves. A lot of pretty good moves. I think I have here. Could also just defend this with a rook. Which is probably sensible enough. I think this is a sensible enough move. Not changing anything too dramatically. But I'm just defending my bishop in the event of takes. I'll be able to take back however I want. And I probably am taking with my queen, to be honest. No, I'm not. That drops a bishop. I'm taking back with my bishop right away without any thought. It's a very easy decision I take back with my bishop. There were alternatives, like I could start maneuvering this guy into the position, which might also have been very good. But I like that I'm opposing this rook, because there could be some back rank stuff. Like if he takes, there's actually maybe I do take this knight, immediately threatening a back rank something. Or I could drop back this way, because he doesn't have time to move this rook away. He doesn't have time to even swap and then take this guy because then I would be on the back rank. Doesn't mean that's my best decision, but there is a little bit of a, a tactic there. Let's see what he comes up with. He's really having a hard time getting this knight into the game. I think you just, I think you just bring it in and if I want to swap, I swap. What are you going to do? Because if he goes here, I probably have to, I probably take it. Okay. Maybe g5. Maybe rook here. Let's play g5. Oh, he's on this pawn. Do I care? No, I don't care. I don't think I care. Because I can, like, win this pawn. Let's play this. So I'm going to give up this C pawn, which actually is going to make his pawn chain a lot more mobile. But I suspect I'll be winning stuff in the middle. So my pawn structure on the queen side gets a little bit more connected. Uh, maybe, maybe bishop takes, honestly. Because I'm trying to win this E pawn. And if you come this way, there's going to be some pins and stuff. Yeah, so he doesn't even go for this C pawn. I can always take this thing and then try to bring my my queen in. Which could be annoying. Takes and then swoop the queen in right away. It could be annoying. Could be really bad. Let's go for this. So I'm trying to take here and pin things this way. And if you come in, I don't know. Can I be can I be annoying at all? I want to be I want to be annoying. Maybe I'm not annoying enough. Hmm. Uh oh. Maybe he's maybe he's starting to take control. I've allowed quite a lot of counterplay here. And you know, I realize now that he has this. She doesn't go for. I'm waiting for this to be like a funny idea. But it's not that funny. Unless it is. Wait, this makes a threat. So he can't take this because there's this mate threat. 
And I think I'm threatening to take this pawn. Because if his queen took back, then this would be checkmate. So bishop to d1. <laughs> I don't think it's easy to attack my bishop again. And I also have this as an idea, too. This is like a backup idea. Because if you take, then I'm on this guy. And then I'm, I'm really in there. But I think this is my biggest threat, for sure. Okay, so he deals with that one. So if you go here, I can take this. And then at minimum, I'm taking this if I can't find a checkmate. So how does he stay connected to the rook and this square? I don't think that he can. So I might win. <laughs> the queen needs to defend both of these squares. Which is impossible. Because I'm attacking you. Ha! Huh. <laughs> Okay, so now I can take here. This might be their best shot, but now I'm going to be able to grab this guy. Quick scan. I don't think I'm going to do better than this. And now we just need to find the win here. This should be easy. <laughs> Come on, bishop anywhere. Protect my rook. Why not just protect my rook? And then if that way, if we can't find the mate, we can always grab we can always grab this knight. This it it has to be mate, though, I do believe. If you run up and take my bishop, I'm gonna be checking and mating you. If you run back, we're so close to it. Let's just give it let's give a few checks. Let's force him into a, making a decision. If you go in the corner, it's checkmate. If you come up, it's here. And then after takes, it's mate. So GG. Let's see if we can get him <laughs> to say tell people to subscribe on YouTube. Let's see if he's okay with me posting this on YouTube. Yes! <laughs> he says yes! Subscribe to Jonathan Schrantz. You heard my opponent. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. And Vampire Chicken, of course. He's a subscriber to all the channels. So let's take a look at this because it was, oh, actually let's put the camera back to where it's meant to be. And let's really have a look because it was so weird. We were playing against the Wagon Gambit and my opponent played G4, which has been played. This is, this is a move that has been played. There's 38 games in the database and shockingly it's minus one. It's like I'm somehow up an entire pawn here. But it's an interesting idea because now he plays E4 and he's attacking my knight, so he's going to be forcing me back. d6 is the only way to get an advantage. If you do run away with your knight, they actually might get a lot of compensation by kicking you around, developing quickly, and maybe it's not so easy to play something like this as black. So I decided to play pawn to d6. Bishop to e2 makes a lot of sense to me. There's nothing better than running away with the knight. And now knight to c3, and it was here that I had to come up with a plan. And I rejected g6, which is actually given as like a top move by the engine, because I'm just kind of vaguely worried that in some setup where he's castled queenside, he's going to have like h4 in some sort of an attack. And I rejected e5 on the principle that we might trade queens, and even though I'm a pawn up, I would never do it, okay? So I decided to develop my knight and play for e5, which is correct. But now where do I go? Oh, I didn't even consider going to d4. Ah, I probably would have, if I had considered it, I think I would have, have gone for it. Um, and I was kind of debating between going here and here. This is like regarded as best by the computer, but there's always gonna be this h4 stuff. I mean, okay, if you're a computer, I'm sure you just defend against it easily. But I should have gone to d4, going for takes, 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 and now g6, and you just give the pawn back, but I must be so strong on these dark squares. Holy cow. Let's say h4. Let me just actually see this for a second. Opponent, let's just say that they like move back, okay? Computer says if you want to move back, you go here. And the computer has no fear, so it's going to keep developing or castling, and probably I have a lot of compensation here on the dark squares, but it's, it wasn't so easy at all. Um, to comprehend this during a game. And even if I had seen all of this, I think it would still be hard to go for something like this. But I probably would have if I had even considered it. H4 is always some move. Here we were just developing. Um, H4 was played now. 
And I decided to go in for this. And taking on c5 actually is one of the top choices. It kind of took me by surprise, because I think this pawn structure is going to be very easy for me to play. He does have this immediate f4, which was slightly annoying. But in my mind, uh, I'm going to be able to decide what happens with this pawn structure. Like, I have breaks in this position. Like, I'm going to be able to play for the b5 break when I'm good and ready. Or if I want to play for c6 and attack the center, I'll do it when I'm good and ready. And it won't make sense if he's castled on the queen side. I don't think for him to ever try to break this down, and he might not be as successful. And he doesn't have as many breaks on the king side because he gambited a pawn. But knight g4 is a correct move. After takes, takes. Maybe there was some way he could have avoided takes. He had this issue of not being able to get his knight into the game, so maybe there was some point. I did not uh, consider rook to f1 <laughs> for the opponent, um, but they did. So this is actually a pretty decent move. Queen d6 is given as best bishop f6. These are all kind of the ideas. I played bishop f6, and then this was just simply a mistake that loses a pawn. And I actually want to see... What would have happened if I had taken this? There's queen h2. Hmm. But I realized after I could maybe take this because at some moment you're hoping for some sort of issue on this diagonal, which is a common thing in these kinds of structures. And any king's Indian, when they castle this way, they might run into some issues with the bishop. But after this, uh, I was now able to just simply take this. And you're not able to take back with anything because of bishop to g5. So they ran with the king. Bishop e5 is correct and very strong. And he has just kind of a major issue. And I, I think at some moment you got to get the knight out regardless of what I'm going to do about it. And this seemed kind of annoying, <clears throat> but this gun is defended. And at some point I do have f5, which I could do right away. <coughs> Queen d7 is also very strong. Uh, and after this guy got attacked, my only move is to play pawn to f5. But this actually turns out to be pretty useful in this structure anyway. I got castled on the queen side. Computer wants the castle on the king side, which is kind of crazy, but it does make sense to put a rook on the f file. Uh, it just wasn't wasn't on my mind during the game. Here I put my rook here to defend my bishop. G5 is fine. Um, rook takes, bishop takes. It's all pretty good. Um, queen d6 was also possible here. I made a big decision in taking this knight, and it did turn out to work. But I thought I was going to get a lot more counterplay than I actually did. Because I'm allowing him to start rolling this center at some moments, which he's able to get going. But now after this, maybe there is some better way for him to defend. And it probably is rook to c1, forcing me to go somewhere. I don't know. Maybe I would have tried to hang around here. But then his pawns get to go. And even though I'm still winning, maybe he can find some chances to outplay me here. But he brought this queen back. And this is where I kind of came upon this idea. Now, it works without bishop to d1. I can just play this right away. But I played bishop to d1 to create some threat potential on the c1 square. And after he just played some random move, we were able to exploit this. Knight e2 is a decent move, taking control of this square. And, you know, probably I could have just traded, but who knows what I would have come up with. Um, instead, we saw here... I played f4, and now he's just lost. Because um, there's nowhere that you can put your queen that doesn't avoid an issue either on this square or this square. So he tried his best, but now he's able to take this. And I did just mess a checkmate. Oh, it's actually like insanely easiest checkmate of all time? No, it is not? Okay. It, it is? <laughs> just kidding, it is? All right, easy checkmate. Thanks to everybody in the comments that... Saw it before me. Hey, did he... Hey, I don't watch the analysis of this guy's videos. Hey, did he just miss a mate in three? Yeah, he did. Thank you, commenter in the future that didn't watch the whole analysis. <laughs> um, and yeah, from here, we were able to find it. And then from here, I'm going to get there because, yeah, this is going to lead to a checkmate uh, going back as a mate in one. And here, I think I would have found this one. So thank you to my subscriber for the fun game. Uh, let me know when you guys ever play me. If you are a sub, it really means a lot to me. And you can sub just like my opponent. Thank you for the fun game. See you guys next time.